Morning, everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been asked to speak for five minutes, a uh, mercifully brief period of time, uh, about radio in the mobile age. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to try and link it as well to some of the points made by Margaret and Justin, and incidentally, my son <coughs> just turned 13. And in between arguments, I recognise all of that behaviour. Um, so, uh, I'd like to start by reasserting something, really, which is that the radio has always been... Sorry, I'll get to my slide. There we go. This one. Radio has always been a mobile medium. Ever since the technology allowed, people have, used, uh, have been used to carrying radio around with them, whether that's uh, in car, you know, the first uh, radio set in car, I think it was Motorola in the 1930s, uh, and in the hand, the first transistor radio, the Regency TR1, for those of you that are interested, uh, from the 1950s. Uh, so people got used to radio accompanying them around as they go about their daily lives. Uh, and sadly, actually I looked at these and I thought, I'm very familiar with devices like this from my youth, which makes me feel particularly dated. And, and to touch on Justin's point about the media ecology, despite seismic changes in the media ecology since these times, this sort of follow-me nature of radio has remained a constant. The thing that's different is that uh, the devices look a bit different these days. Um, for example, here's what uh, an in-car radio might look like nowadays. Uh, although, having said that it's different, this one looks sort of very much strongly related to the car radios of old. Um, and it may now also offer to play CDs, uh, allow you to plug in your MP3 player, listen to DAB, but beyond that, it's still very much a radio-centric device. The more interesting developments are in the handheld sector, where we've moved from radio devices to devices with radio in them. For example, the iPod Nano now comes with an integrated FM radio. Uh, remember when people said the iPod was going to kill radio listening? Um, something like 50% of all new mobile phones have an FM inter radio integrated into them. Nokia have now launched a plug-in that allows people to listen to DAB radio through certain models. And all smartphones give access to radio, a whole raft of radio apps, which is soon going to be joined next year by the, uh, the joint BBC and commercial radio, radio player app. So the accompaniment role that radio plays in people's lives is being reflected in how the medium is incorporated into other devices. And I think this is hugely important from a perspective of younger audiences. So let me demonstrate why. This chart shows how listening through digital platforms differs amongst 15 to 24s compared to all adults. So I'd particularly like to draw your attention to the fact that 15 to 24 listening via DTV is twice the level of adults. Now I predict that's probably about uh, free view uh, second TV sets in teen bedrooms. Sorry, I'll get back, I'm finished that slide. Uh, secondly, listening via the internet is two and a half times higher amongst 15 to 24 than adults. And Justin talked about the, the omnipresent laptop, and I think you know, that's a sign of that. You know, the computers are very much <coughs> central to teens' lives. So the conclusion from this, or my conclusion, is, uh, is simple really. If you make radio available, in relevant devices for younger audiences, then they're going to listen. And I think we see a similar swing towards younger audiences for listening to mobile too. Across the last five years, the overall number of people listening to radio via their mobile phones has grown by about 50%. And once again, 15 to 24 are leading the way. In this context, radio seems to be well set to exploit the mobile age, especially in terms of engaging younger audiences. However, in the interest of full disclosure, I should acknowledge that the penetration of uh, FM radios in mobiles is much higher than current listening levels. So what's, what's that causing that tension? Well, I think it possibly could be down to a lack of awareness. As far as I know, I'm the only person who considers whether a, a phone contains a radio as being a fundamental issue of whether I buy it or not. Um, but I think alternatively, it could be a lack of understanding about radio listening through your mobile. You know, do you have to pay to listen? Uh, are there concerns about the implications of listening to uh, radio through apps on your mobile, you know, in, in terms of your monthly allowance? How much is it going to eat up? But I think there's also a content issue which we've covered as well. So let's, let's consider content. Now, uh, we've seen some figures from Margot. Margot's are probably more up to date than mine, but the story is, is very much the same. On the plus side, you know, radio, it's got great music content. People love music, particularly younger audiences and it's still perceived to be the primary source for new music discovery by pretty much any audience. Uh, within this research, we also broke it down into, into various different uh, subsets of audience, and admittedly, among some of the younger, more musically astute ones, 
the internet was scoring much higher, but still they scored radio as the highest, uh, the best source for discovering new music. I think perhaps this is because radio offers a unique listening experience compared to on-demand audio. Uh, and to me this is best brought to life in a, in a Julie Virtual quote from a few years ago from Guardian Weekend, which is this, hearing a beloved song on the radio is as near as godless teens get to a religious experience. <laughs> Pop radio has brought home to people the transcendent purity of hearing a favourite song at random. I think that's a great quote, and I think it really describes what radio offers compared to all of the other on-demand audio opportunities out there. And you know, perhaps, perhaps that's why, you know, in the latest radio, radio's got record levels of reach. And also why it's something like an estimated 5 million commercial radio apps have been downloaded to smartphones since launch. Because radio really does offer something different. However, the real challenge to radio in the mobile world must lie in the field of content. With smartphone apps offering so many and much varied content alternatives to interact with, it's crucial that radio adapts to remain a fresh, compelling and preferred media experience in the mobile environment. I'm sure Clive's going to touch on this in a bit more detail later. But this isn't just a radio challenge, it's one that's faced by all content served on mobile phones, and that includes research. And that is my note to hand over to AJ to explain how Ipsos are dealing with that challenge from a research perspective. Thank you very much.